Here we go with the second part of All Summer in a Day by Ray Bradbury. So, the sun came out. It was the color of flaming bronze and it was very large. Remember, we have William and Margot, and Margot is where? That's right, she's locked in the closet and nobody knows that she's there. The teacher doesn't. And these kids did that because, you know, what does Margot want more than anything else? What day is she looking forward to more than any other day? That's right, today, because the sun's coming out for one hour in seven years. It was the color of flaming bronze and it was very large and the sky around it was a blazing blue tile color and the jungle burned with sunlight as the children released from their spell rushed out yelling into the springtime. Now don't go too far, called the teacher after them. You've only got two hours. Oh, it's two hours, not one hour. You know, you wouldn't want to get caught out. So that means that something goes on bad with the rain because you don't want to get caught out in the rain. But they were running and turning their faces up to the sky and feeling the sun on their cheeks like a warm iron. They were taking off their jackets and letting the sun burn their arms. Oh, it's better than the sun lamps, isn't it? Much, much better. They stopped running and stood in the great jungle that covered Venus that grew and never stopped growing tumultuously even as you watched it. It was a nest of octopi clustering up great arms of flesh-like weed wavering, flowering in this brief spring. It was the color of rubber and ash, this jungle, from the many years without sun. It was the color of stones and white cheeses and ink. It was the color of the moon. Because what makes plants green is the chlorophyll that's in their chloroplast. Um, and so these don't have that because there's no sun. That's what activates that. So the children lay out laughing on the jungle mattress and heard it sigh and squeak under them, resilient and alive. Sighing and squeaking. Have you ever walked on like wet grass and it squeaks? That's kind of, I think, what it's talking about. They ran among the trees. They slipped and fell. They pushed each other. They played hide and seek and tag. But most of all, they squinted at the sun until the tears ran down their faces. They put their hands up that yellowness and that amazing blueness. And they breathed of the fresh, fresh air and listened and listened to the silence which suspended them in a blessed sea of no sound and no motion. I want you to look at that sentence. Like that is a beefy sentence. It starts on this page. Every part of it starts with they. And it's like showing, they use these commas to separate, but most of all they, you know, it's showing this like how much it's just going and going and going and that sentence fluency that you can think of in your story. Um, if you have a character or a part where it's just like, it's just going and they can't get a hold of it. You know, they used a semicolon, but there's no periods. They have the they's over and over. They have fresh repeated. And then they have the no sound, no motion to end it. So it's like going, 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 going no sound, no motion, which is kind of that juxtapositioning again, those ideas of opposites. Um, I might be overlooking or looking too deeply at this, but something to think about as you write. They looked at everything and savored everything. Then wildly like animals escaped from their caves, they ran and ran in shouting circles. They ran for an hour and did not stop running. So again, we have they and they, but we don't have any names other than those two. Remember, teacher is just teacher. And then in the midst of their running, one of the girls wailed. Everyone stopped. Look at how they did this too as a writer. All by itself, it doesn't even have an ending punctuation mark. Like it's so important, like everything's coming to a halt with this line, okay? The girl standing in the open held out her hand. Oh, look, look, she said trembling. And they came slowly to look at her opened palm. In the center of it, cupped and huge, was a single raindrop. She began to cry looking at it. They glanced quietly at the sun. Oh, oh, a few cold drops fell on their noses and their cheeks and their mouths. The sun faded behind a stir of mist. The wind blew cold around them. I wonder if these few drops, they don't hurt. Few drops, okay, question mark, I don't know. A wind blew cold around them. They turned and started to walk back toward the underground house, their hands at their sides, their smiles vanishing away. A boom of thunder startled them and like leaves for a new hurricane, they tumbled upon each other and ran. So they got to get out. They know that the storm's coming. They're running. Okay. Lightning struck 10 miles away, five miles away, a mile, a half a mile. The sky darkened into midnight in a flash. They stood in the doorway of the underground for a moment until it was raining hard. Then they closed the door and heard the gigantic sound of the rain falling in tons and avalanches everywhere. 
and forever. These words everywhere and forever keep being repeated too. I wonder if you went back, how many times did you get? Will it be seven more years? Yes, seven. Then one of them gave a little cry. <gasps> Margo! What? She's still in the closet where we locked her. Margo. You know, remember they compared her to a ghost earlier too. And like, if they could barely hear her. So nobody even noticed. They just played outside for this whole two hours and nobody even noticed she wasn't there. They stood as if someone had driven them like so many stakes into the floor. They looked at each other and then looked away. They glanced out at the world that was raining now and raining and raining steadily. They could not meet each other's glances. It's like they knew they went too far. On this one. Their faces were solemn and pale. They looked at their hands and feet, their faces down. Margo. One of the girls said, well, no one moved. Go on, whispered the girl, and they walked down the hall in the sound of the cold rain. They turned through the doorway of the room in the sound of the storm and thunder, lightning on their faces, blue and terrible. They walked over to the closet door slowly and stood by it. Behind the closet door was only silence. They unlocked the door even more slowly and let Margo out. The sad piece, really. You have... Um, the one character, you know, Margo, again, we only named Margo and William. Nobody else had a name. So think of the significance of that. Everybody else is a they, it's a group. Um, but Margo, man, they went into a lot of describing of her and letting us know that really she is so meek and so quiet. You know, she doesn't fit in. She grew up in Ohio and her family moved here when she was four, whereas all these kids, they were born on Venus. Um, I mean, teacher, doesn't have her name's teacher. Where's teacher? Um, so these kids, not being very nice, um, put her in a closet on the, during the two hours that she's been wanting most. And I can see the reluctance in this last section here, um, kind of their regret, at least of someone realizing that she's in there, you know, and this kind of reminds me, we talk about leadership. We talk about the idea of bullying and standing up for people. And, you know, you have these kids you know, who had the power here? Who was in control? And how did that leader influence the group? Because nobody said, yo, William, not cool, dude. Like, for the most part, they either went along with it and helped him, or they just really didn't do anything. And, you know, we look at societies and when is society or a group mentality changed? Is it when someone, you know, sits back and says, oh, what can I do? Or is it when a group of people decide to do something about it? Um, we've talked a lot about um, people marching. We've talked about people gathering and protest. Um, so think about that again, kind of like the last story we read, would this be able to change if somebody said something and said, no, this, we're done. Um, and I want you to think about that as you continue, as well as the idea of that leadership, who was the leader and how did that influence everything that these kids were experiencing? So, all right, see you later.